Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to lose money from property. You hear me correctly, it's all about losing money. I know many of you will hear investment strategies or buying certain properties or adopting certain strategy to make money from properties. It's all about making money. However, it seems nobody is interested in discussing how to lose money from property. Do you know? As human beings, we learn the most from our failure and not from our success. I'll be discussing five ways to lose money from property. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the discussion. Do you know some properties are not even worth buying in the first place? Yet I still see buyers falling for this trap again and again. Here, don't ask me which specific properties are there. There are plenty of them around Singapore. They are the kind of stuff that I don't even bother to see. Yes, some of them can be of freehold tenure. Many will go rah-rah for it. But when they hit the resale market, sadly, many will go gaga over it. Don't believe in what I'm saying? Let me share this property with you. Here, I wouldn't name it in case owner there later not happy and click the dislike button to hurt my algorithm. This condo is on freehold tenure, near some popular schools and is of mixed development with a retail mall downstairs. On launch, buyers are attracted by the affordable quantum and freehold tenure. However, when it hit the resale market, they are hard to sell. Buyers walk in and shake their head out. Few want to invest in them. Finding tenants is not easy and so on. It's only recently in 2023 that prices move up and many exit with a small profit and faster move on. What can we learn from here? Well. Not all mixed development can buy. Some can buy, some 50-50, and some have to avoid altogether. We have to look at it from both a macro and micro perspective. It's not so straightforward. This is by far the most common mistake people make when coming to property investment. As we all know, the authority hiked ABSD for the second property from 13% to 20% in 2023. This means the party is almost over. I know there will still be buyers who don't buy buying a second or even third property by paying ABSD. Well, I can only say, please, by all means, contribute to nation building. For me, I wouldn't. Why? Obviously, the battle hasn't started, but you already lost 20% plus 4% normal buyer stamp duty. This means you'll be worse off by 24% on the onset. From an investment point of view, it's a no-no for me. I believe the majority of Singaporeans will also think in the same way. However, some of them try to outsmart the market by buying non-residential properties to avoid paying ABSD. They will explore uncharted territory such as commercial or industrial properties instead. Interestingly, most of them never study them. They just go in, look at the budget they can afford, the location of the property, preferably near their house, and hopefully they can flip it in a few years' time. Here, don't get me wrong, I never say cannot buy commercial or industrial properties. But please, Buy only what you know. Please do your homework well before committing. Don't buy just to sell ABSD. A word of wisdom for you. Don't be penny wise but pound foolish. I believe you will be exposed to some property lobangs that are too good to be true. Or some investment strategy that can guarantee you to make money in the shortest possible time. Then, there will be those who are selling overseas properties with flashy videos and excitement in the product. Or paying for those overrated courses teaching you how to structure your property purchase in a very ambiguous arrangement. Sorry, count me out. Buy at your own risk. Later you lose money, please don't cry mother or father. Don't need to complain to the authority when you cannot get back your money. The prospectors have already stated clearly the risk involved. You enter at your own risk. In my heart, I only say, why do people like to part away their life saving, buying property they don't even know well, or some deal they are too good to be true? Are they so naive to believe in such koyo? That is why scammers like to attack us, because they know Singaporean easy target and have plenty of saving. I have personally encountered friends that cannot scam off their money. Such money can easily be used to fully pay a condominium. This is no joke. So please, 
see second or even third opinions before you kiss goodbye to your saving. Let me share with you a case. There is a family of four that sold their HDB flat and want to upgrade to a condominium. But because of limited funds, they can only afford a two-bedroom condo. Their strategy is this, to and cash it out after holding it for a few years and hopefully upgrade to a bigger condo instead. Subsequently, they bought a two-bedroom in a lousy project and in a lousy location. Sadly, things don't work too well for them as planned. The property did not perform as expected. They have to hold it for a very long time until prices went up before they can exit for the small profit. Or should I bluntly say, they barely break even. I can sense that they regretted their decision, but what to do? Now with the 15 months debarment period for private property owners to buy a HDB resale flat, they are stuck again with renting a place after selling their condominium. Net net, they are even worse off to go through so much trouble just to climb up the private property ladder and come back to a HDB flat again. Here, what can we learn? Buy within your means. If you have the means, please go for it. Don't upgrade just because you see people upgrade and make money and you also want to be part of the game. Make sure you have strong saving for uncertainty in life. And also, buy a property where you and your family can live comfortably in the event it cannot make money. BTO flats today are damn solid. If you want to play it safe, this is a no-brainer. This part, I doubt I need to explain. In the past two years, there was talk on fear of missing out. Some families who are currently staying in the fully paid HDB flats has some cash lying around. They are not willing to sell their current flat and also don't have the means to buy their second property. However, they have a bright idea. They have some cash easily enough for their down payment. They will use their teenage child who is really working. They will use his or her name to buy a private property instead and avoid paying ABSD. The child will take a hefty loan for their property. This is something that has been quite prevailing in the past few years. That is why in this today article, it say it all. It mentioned there is an increasing trend for young buyers below 35 years old owning new private property. It is also true that some young buyers have higher income compared to a decade ago. This means they can rightfully buy their first private property from a very young age. However, most of them have limited budget and tend to skew towards smaller one or two bedrooms units for investment instead. This typical strategy is to hold them after TOP and dispose them after the three years seller stamp duty. Hopefully, they can encash it out for the small profit. Here, some make attractive profit, like in this example in Avenue South Residence. The one bedroom are making pretty attractive profit in such a short time. Based on the average profitable transactions, they make about 190,000 each. On the other hand, I'm waiting for more transactions for Normandon Park to appear. Currently, there are only two resale transactions for two bedrooms. There are no transactions yet for the rest of the unit stops. Normandon Park has 1,800 units and it will be a good barometer for the new condo performance obtaining its TOP. Here, I've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it. Sorry for my blunt word and the hard truth. As what Lee Kuan Yew family said, and let me rephrase it, whoever buy properties in Singapore, must do your homework or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your money and my money. We save our hard-earned money for it. As long as we are savvy enough, nobody can cheat our money. With that, that's all. Appreciate it if you can like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so. See you around.